Good morning, everybody. Has the caffeine kicked in yet? No? I, I know the previous class, the caffeine definitely did not kick in. It, it, was, really, it was really quiet. <laughs> Good morning. Um, my name is Thomas Morales. I'm an instructor over at Cerritos College. Uh, the obligatory introductions, so you know who I am and what I've done. Uh, yes, I did start on release 2.1 in the spring of 1986. Um, been using ACA since release 1.0. Uh, I actually was using it even before it became ACA when it was Softdesk 8, for those of you that are as old as I am to remember that. Um, these are just a small list of some of the projects I've worked on. Um, actually, I forgot to ask, uh, add in there, I've also worked out on religious, I did a church about a year ago. Um, this class is going to be very specific in that um, we're going to concentrate just on the elevation section styles. Okay, we're going to be very specific on how to be able to tweak, edit, you know, customize however you want to um, how you're, however you want to put it so that when you do generate your elevations or your sections you will have to do the least amount of editing okay uh, as it stands right now you may or may not depending on the complexity of your elevations uh, get to the point where you won't have to do any editing to the elevation it'll be just as you want it to be um, but if you get to that point, okay, you're a better man than I, Gunga Din, um, because I know that there's always going to be at least some, some editing that has to be done. Um, first and foremost, though, to be able to fully understand how to be able to do the elevations, you have to have somewhat of an understanding of the display system. Okay. Um, how many have a pretty good understanding of the display system, display configurations and all that? Yes, no? about half the room, okay? Um, that, that's going to be one of the key things to be able to understand how to be able to, to uh, tweak the colors of either the model or the elevation style so that you get the line weights and, and the representation that you want. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, the display system, I strongly suggest you go and you download this once they put them up on AU Online. The handouts for both of these classes, um, I, I would say it, it would definitely, like I said, if you, if you don't have a complete understanding of the display system, get these two handouts, work it in conjunction what I'm with what I'm going to show you and what's in my handout, and it should complete the picture. Yeah, I know. Didn't you know there's a theater over there? Everybody good? Okay, the display system. Different AEC objects use uh, different display representations. And, and again, don't worry too much if, if you're not too familiar with it. I'm going to cover some of this stuff and show you where it is so that later on you can go back and take a look at it yourself. Uh, AAC objects use the model display representation, okay? As you can see, the wall for model under the section elevation display set. And it's one of those things where, okay, put that in the back of your mind and remember that because as we go through and start messing with the elevations, you're going to see this information back again. The exception to that rule is doors and windows. Doors and windows use the elevation display representation. I do not know why it's different. It just is. And the third one is multi-view blocks and any of the helper objects. They just use the general display representation. Okay. Different parts of the elevation styles that you'll be working with. Components. Okay. Components, like it says here, creates a new display component. And I'll go into detail on that. 
design rules. Design rules sets how a particular component is going to be represented in the elevation. And again, I'll, I'll go through and start completing the circle on all of this. And then you have your display properties. Display properties, just like in any other AEC object, where you can control your color, your line type, your visibility, so on and so forth. And also you have subdivisions. Subdivisions allow you to create your depth of field to where if you have a wall and then another wall and another wall, like in a tip, typical hand drafting, you would have had the, the walls that are in the foreground be of thicker line weight, and as it starts to fade back, the line work starts to fade back. And you can automate that. And I'll show that also. What comes out of the box? Out of the box, you get two different styles. You get the 2D section style 96, which is what you'll probably mainly use. Um, a word on CAD management. How many CAD managers in here? First thing you want to do is make a copy of this. And then you want to use, say, the initials of your firm in front of it so that you save the original that came out of the box and that you can do all your tweaks and customizations to this, the one with your initials, so that when it comes time for the next release and maybe they have the same one with the same name, but they've tweaked some of the settings in here, it doesn't overwrite what you've already done in the previous year. And, and that methodology applies to basically everything that's an AEC object. You know, all your different wall styles, door styles, anything else. You want to put the, um, an abbreviation of what your, maybe your firm's initials are in the front. That way, again, you know exactly what is your standard stuff and then what may have come out of the box. And the other door style, or the other elevation style you get is 2D section style background. I understand why they put that in there, um, but frankly, I don't use it. Um, because for me, the idea of automating the sections and elevations is so that I don't have to draw them manually. Um, if this is going to be a background, and you can see everything is on the Giano no plot, so none of this stuff's going to show up if you do an elevation using this style. That would mean then you'd have to trace over it to make the line work visible. So why would you want to do that in the first place? I don't know. Learning how the different elevation styles work. I just reverse engineer a lot of this stuff. I go through it all, I pick it apart, and then reverse engineer it. And I'm going to show you an example of, of how reverse engineering allowed me to figure out how all these different components work. And I can't emphasize enough, and I, and I know I'll probably get a lot of very nasty looks for this, but try and use the out-of-the-box styles as much as possible. I know that there's some customization that has to be done. That's a given. No firm does everything exactly the same way. But the out-of-the-box styles, whether it's elevations or anything else, have a lot of pre-programmed properties already assigned to it. And frankly, I've never, I've never subscribed to the idea of taking what came out of the box and testing it, seeing that it pretty much worked already, and then completely dumping it and then go back and, and recustomize it all, uh, especially with the whole idea of changing colors and line type and everything else. I just, I, I found that too costly. And, and in today's economy, <laughs> that's way too costly to do. Ways to get your styles to work with your standards. Uh, a couple different ways. Okay, there's the style base rules, which is what you saw there with the screen captures out of the elevation styles, setting up your design rules um, and, and, and fixing how the components are all going to look. I'll run through all that. Model base changes. There are ways to edit the model geometry, and specifically I'll show you a door and a wall to change the model geometry so that it shows up the way that you want it to. Um, so there's, 
There's not any one particular way of doing this. There's, there's multiple ways. These are the two main ones. Um, as a firm, you're going to have to sit down and go, okay, which way is going to be the best for us based on our methodology of putting our sets together, what we do and what we don't want to show up in the elevation, and how that line work is supposed to, to uh, show up when we finally go to print. Uh, layer color line type is a, is a setting within the style so that any elevation that you create that's within what's called subdivision one or within that little bounding box that you create matches exactly to what the layer color and line type is of the geometry that you select in elevation. So if in elevation, if you go and you turn your wall in elevation and it's green, when you go and you make your elevation from the style, it's going to be green. So again, that's another way of, if you set all this stuff from within the model, you just click that one box, and then you don't have to worry about any of the other settings. Boom, there it is. And I'll show that. And then, of course, subdivisions, so you get the depth of field. A word about office standards. Okay. First thing you want to do when you guys want to set up your office standards is close the computer, turn off the computer, walk away from the computer. Grab yourself a set of hard copy drawings. Go into the conference room and go into the conference room with the principals and the owners and sit down and have them start marking up the elevations on what they like and what they don't like as far as line work goes, and what is visible and what is not visible, okay? Boy, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> yeah. Shut up! <laughs> I feel like I'm back in my old apartment. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, um, sit down with your owners and your principals. And, and, and discuss with them. Uh, and, I'm, and for those of you that were in Blaine's class for the display representation, it's, it's the same methodology. Sit down and say what works and what doesn't work as far as the line weight goes. And, and okay, the CAD managers here, okay, owners, don't look at the CAD managers, okay? But CAD managers, this is what's going to happen. You're going to go up to your owner, okay? And you're going to sit there and say, okay, here's a hard copy. What do you like about this graphically? Which line work would you want to change? You know, here's a set of drawings. Can you have it back to me in a week? Mark it up any way you want, and then let's talk about how I'm going to set that. And watch the question marks go over their head. Huh? You, you, you want me to do what, what? And I've had that happen so many times. Yeah, just mark it up. Tell me what you like, what you don't like about the set. What? And Eventually, I have to sit down with them and kind of handhold them and go, okay, you see that line right there? Do you like that line? <laughs> yes, no, everybody, show of hands, that's the wall. Does everybody like the line weight? Yes? Okay, good. Let's move on. Doors. At, because, you know, we've been doing this now for so long on the computer. Uh, I, I think, well, let me back up a second. I started on the drafting board. Okay, so I, I still have that little callus on my finger from holding the pencil way too tight. And I, I remember mechanical pencils, not, not only the, the one where you put it in the thing and you spun it around to sharpen it. For those of you that are too young to know that, don't worry about it. Talk to the older person next to you, they'll tell you what it is. Or the mechanical pencil, those of you that are a little older, okay, yeah, you'll, you'll know that. Um, and, and really, what, what did you deal with? You had a 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. And if you wanted anything thicker than that, well, then you just double-lined it or something. Or if you're really old, you took out black tape and you laid it down on the vellum. Vellum is paper for those of you the younger guys. <laughs> <laughs> those of you that are real old, the mylar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and, and what happened was when we transitioned over into the computers, because there were no standards and it was just the wild, wild west, 
was setting things up, everybody went crazy about all the different line weights that they wanted to use. Oh, our office is going to use 0.25. Okay, well, round that up. Isn't that 0.3? Work with it. Um, and it just got, it got really crazy. And, and I think what ended up happening is the principals weren't used to doing what they used to do, which was, oh, no, no, that line weight is wrong. I want that set up a certain way because graphically, you know, my opinion is, is that when a set of drawings walks out of your office, what should happen is anybody that has ever done business with you, without even looking at the title block, should be able to know and say, that came from so-and-so's office. And I got to tell you, the, one of the best compliments I ever had one time was after leaving the material handling industry, I, I did a small little project for a friend of mine uh, as a favor. I did some drawings for him, printed them out. And a guy I used to work with who was with a rival company, who had moved on to a rival company, walked into the client where they were doing an installation off of my drawings. He called me up later on that evening and he said, hey, did you do drawings for so-and-so? I said, yeah. How do you know? He goes, all I did was I saw the drawings sitting down on, on the construction site, and I knew you did them. And I said, why? And he goes, because it was your style. It was, it, was your, it was your look, and nobody else had it. That was awesome. I knew that when he looked at it, he said, okay, that was a Tom Morales job. So that's what I'm thinking here is, is if, you, if you set this stuff up, what's going to end up happening is you're going to create not only a very good product that's accurate, but you're also going to create a product that's very specific to your company. And anybody looking at it's going to know that came from his company. When you do make that game plan, like I say up here with the principles, keep it simple to begin with, okay? Don't sit there and try and do a 10-story high-rise hospital with all sorts of curtain wall set, um, you know, setups and all this. Start off with something simple, interior elevations. Start off something with really simple. Just try and get your walls, doors, and windows to work correctly. Get that right. Work with that and get that right. And then build from that. You don't have to do everything all at once. Because I can't tell you how many times I've seen people try and do it all at once. And then what ended up happening was they fell way short. And the principal saw that. And they were ready to abandon it. And it was without even really getting out of the gates, they were already tripping. And the principals were already complaining about how it's taking too much overhead time. And it's costing too much money. So we're going to abandon it. We're just going to go back to the old way. Not to mention that if your users are resistant to doing it in this manner, if you fall out of the gates already, that's just going to give them more ammunition to sit there and say, see, I told you so. Let's just do it the old way. And you know, i got to tell you a true story. Um, firm I worked for, I was a CAD manager. I got some of what you'll see up here put together. We were doing hospitals. Okay, we had a brand new hospital that we were doing, and with minimal instruction to one of our CAD guys, uh, he was able to do 60 rooms worth of sheets, which I think ended up being about 12 or 15 sheets worth of interior elevations, doors, walls, and windows, because we started simple in two hours. And I knew that those elevations were perfectly accurate because they matched with the floor plan. Now, I defy anybody to be able to do that same type of accuracy um, by hand. It's just not going to happen. And once the principals saw that, the little light bulb went on. They started calculating the money in their head, how much they just saved. And all of a sudden, it was that much more that they were proponents laying down the law to those people that were resistant, saying, no, I don't care what you say. You're going to be doing it this manner. And one of the things you're also going to see when I start 
messing with the styles is you're going to sit there and say, God, that's going to be a lot of work to do all this stuff, to set all these things up. And the short answer is, yeah, it is. But I always try and, and give this uh, example and sit there and say, look, what would you rather do? Would you rather spend a dollar every month to do something for the rest of the life of your firm, however long that might be? Or would you like to spend $100 one time and be done with it? So if you do all of this, set it all up, and, and sure, I understand, it's, it's going to be kind of a living document. There's going to be some tweaks and edits that you're going to do. But it's not like you're going to be recreating the wheel every time. So if you invest the time and the money, and you know, I don't know how your firms are doing <laughs> um, right now, but you know, I've spoken to colleagues and friends, and some of them say that they just can't get enough people, and others say they're really hurting. For those that are really hurting or maybe have had a slowdown, in my opinion, this is the perfect time to do this kind of training to be able to get all this stuff done, to get it all set up. And I know that that would be kind of a hard pill to swallow, but the, the light at the end of the tunnel is, is that if you do all this training and everything now, as the economy starts to pick back up again and get better, then you're going to be ready to go. You're not going to be doing this type of training and setting up and customizing or, or however you want to phrase it while you're in the middle of actually doing a lot of work and you're having massive deadlines that you have to, you know, really fast deadlines that you have to take care of. Take care of it now so that when you start getting all those new jobs and everything starts, you know, speeding up again, you're set. You're ready to go. So anyhow. Now, Everyone's basically familiar with how to create an elevation. Um, I just basically created a, um, uh, uh, a door here with, inside a, uh, just generate a nice simple elevation. Now, make sure you can see this. Remember the display set, how I was showing you? Okay, this is the display set you want to use. And there's the style that I'm going to use, the 2D section 96. Nice little toy. There you go. Okay. This would be the one right here that I should have the initials in front of it from my firm. Okay. But what I'm going to use is just all stuff that's straight out of the box. So you can see what you're already dealing with, and then you can start uh, customizing this stuff. Okay. So, select my objects, go and pick it, and there's my elevation. Okay, what's the first thing wrong with this? It just jumps out at me the first time I saw this. Yeah, the doors swing. Okay, shouldn't that be a dash dot line? Come on. All right, so. How do you change that? How do you fix that? Here comes the reverse engineering stuff. Okay, let's take a look at it. Let's go edit, you, know, you click on the elevation, right click, and you go edit 2D section and style. First thing you see is under the components tab, there it is. Okay, there is the swing lines and the description, door and window swing lines. A word about the description fields. Fill them in, okay? Not only will it help you remember what you were thinking at the time for whatever work that you're doing, but I've always kind of taken this approach that if I do all this work and tomorrow I get hit by a bus, my, my users will be able to continue on with what I've already given them and they'll understand what I was trying to do. Or a not-so-morbid example would be if I hit the lottery and I tell them, I don't even say goodbye, I just leave <laughs> and say, forward whatever check I have to Tahiti, then they can continue working because I'd feel bad if I left them in, uh, you know, without understanding what I did. If you go to the, to the display properties, 
Swing lines. Swing lines as in swing lines. Anybody ever add a component to a wall style? What happens when you add that component to the wall style? It shows up in the display properties, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly what this does. As soon as you add something here, it shows up right there. Pretty straightforward. The color that is color 70 hidden 2. Well, there you go. Color 70 hidden 2. There's your swing line. So if you want to change what this is, well, let's change it to something else. Dash dot. And I want it to be red. There it is. It's that simple. Yes? The elevation itself? Oh. Actually, yeah, thank you for asking that. Uh, you'll notice something. Not once in any of this, and if you look at the handout, not once do I talk about going to layer manager or messing with layers or anything like that, because I don't need the layers. I can set all of the properties, the colors, the line type, everything else. I can just leave it on whatever layer it ends up going to, which is probably going to be layer zero, because I'm not going to have a situation where I'm going to freeze and thaw this stuff. If, if I'm going to have it visible, then I'm going to assign whatever colors I want it to be on here already. If there's something that I don't want visible, then I'll either make a design rule for it so that it does not, you know, it's not visible, so then I don't have to worry about freezing and thawing a layer, or I'll change it in the model to where it's not visible and then it, it doesn't show up at all in the elevation. And I'll show you that example. Seem pretty straightforward? Any questions? Are you doing this based on CTB right now? Yes. Yes. How many use CTBs? Pretty much every STBs? Okay. Um, that's the largest grouping of people I've ever seen that all use STBs. Anybody I've ever spoken to uses CTBs. That's not a bad thing. It's just that's what I've always run into. One of the other ways of being able to figure out how to change these items is if you click on the elevation, right click, and say select component. Familiar with this command? Came out, I don't know, one or two releases ago. Click on the line work and come over here to the properties. See there? There's your style. It says unknown component right now because it's not really assigned to anything. But you can find out what components are going to what and where by using that. Let's see. Next thing. Design components. Okay. This is where I, what I would do is make style-based changes, what I call style-based changes. Okay, click, right-click, edit the wall, edit this elevation style. Here's where if I add a component and give it a name, I'm going to call it CMU pattern, and it's the wall pattern. Okay. So now if I come back over here to the display properties, there it is. And it comes in at layer zero by block for everything. 
we'll fix that. But I want to establish a design rule for it. Okay? I want to say, I want to add a design rule for it. Right now, when it comes in, it always comes in at red, and it says on the defining line, the component is on the defining line. Um, you understand what that is on the defining line? Where the, uh, where the cut is of it on the defining line? That's the defining line right there. Come on, move. Okay, so for argument's sake, we're going to come back and we're going to say, you know what, that hatch pattern there for the CMU, that's not coming out right for us. Line type's too thick, line type's too thin, whatever the, the case may be. Okay. Well, how do I determine how to change that? Okay, so let's talk about... Um, Changing it, uh, what did I say? Change it on the, you know, within the subdivision, okay? If I, okay, now what I have here on this side here on the right is basically just this wall here, as you can see how it highlights, in elevation, okay? So that's all that is on the right-hand side. This is derived from this. This is just an elevation of that same item. Okay. Now I'm going to click, right click, select component, and I'm going to grab that brick so I can see what it is. Okay. It is color 30. It is by material. And that's one of the main that's that's the one thing you really all have to figure out is what color is it? Okay? Again, you're not dealing with layers. What's the color that I'm dealing with here? Color 30. Okay. So if I come back over here, I edit the style, I've created my component. Now what I'm going to say here is anything within color 30 or anything that is color 30. And for argument's sake here, I'm going to say within subdivision 1 or better yet, let's say any visible. Okay. Which component do I want to assign it to? I want to assign it to the CMU pattern. This CMU pattern is the component that I had created here. Is it getting a little confusing? No? This makes sense? A little bit? So when I created this here, it gave me this here as an option. See how it's below swing lines? Okay, so CMU pattern now, if I come over here to display properties, now shows up right there. Now at this point I can sit there and say, okay, I want you to be magenta. And say okay. Say okay, say okay. Click on this, refresh it, and it didn't work. Don't kill me now. Color 30. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, refresh. Didn't work. Uh, you can do that. No, that's not going to do it. CMU pattern is the wall pattern. Any visible. Let's put it within subdivision one. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Any visible. There you go. Now. There. Okay. Yes. I think there is, but I, I haven't tried it enough to, to say yes or no that you can do it. At, at this point, 
I've looked at it, and I haven't discovered a way to do that. But I understand what you're talking about, how on the elevation you can change where the starting point is uh, of the hatch pattern and all that. Um, I haven't gotten it to work. Yeah, and that's another option that you could do. Well, see, you know how this is a tied, tied to the material? If you go back to the material, you can probably monkey with the, with the XY settings of it where it starts, and then you can start getting it to, to be in the right location. Okay? So what we did here is we now made a new design rule. Okay? So anything that is color 30, it's not just the CMU pattern. Okay? It's anything that's color 30. So if I've created some sort of wall style or a door style or anything else style, if I have a curtain wall and somewhere in there I have a component that's color 30, it's going to change to this magenta color when I create an elevation. So the theory here would be is, okay, take all the styles that you have that are your office standards, okay? And put them up into an elevation view. Now, if you're like most firms, what you've probably done is you've created all your different um, wall, doors, window styles, everything else that, that you have that's associated with your everyday work. And you've gone to the dis display properties of all those AEC styles, and you've played with all the settings to get it to look the right way. But you haven't changed anything that has to do with either the elevation display representation or the model display representation for the wall. Because un unless you guys are working with either live sections or you've flipped the model up so that you can take a look at it, you've probably never seen this stuff here. How many have, have worked with this already? Yeah, just a couple. Okay. So my advice to you is just like how they set it up out of the box, where they have wall styles as one drawing, and then you have window styles another draw, as another drawing that you take from. That's all the out-of-the-box styles that you get when you install the program. There's an elevation styles one. Okay? Two schools of thought here. You can either take all the standards that you have and dump them into your you know, Tom Morales elevation styles master drawing, and go into a front elevation of it to be able to determine what are the colors that I need to set within my elevation style so that I can get it to look like magenta. Or from within wherever you have those, eight, the, those uh, office standards, flip that up into, into elevation and then make note of it and then create a separate drawing that has your elevation styles. Uh, I kind of mentioned in there uh, the two schools of thought, it really depends on, on how you're managing everything. Personally, oops, personally what I did is um, for my offices that I've worked at, I had walls, doors, and windows in one drawing. And in that one drawing, you know, I drew out all the different styles. They're, they're not just housed within the style manager. I actually put them in, in model space. And created a separate drawing off to, or a separate viewport off to the side and made elevations of each one of them and then made note of, of all the colors and then actually set up my elevation styles within that same drawing. So wall styles, door styles, window styles, and elevation styles were all housed in one drawing. That way, if I changed anything, if I added a style or I changed anything to my masters that are part of the office standards, then I had my elevation styles right there so that I remember to always take care of that also. If they're in two separate drawings, then what happens is if you make that change in, the, in your wall styles, your add one, you have to remember to go back to your elevation styles drawing and make sure that you make that change there also. So depending on how vigilant you are in, in making sure that you make those changes, um, you know, there's two schools of thought there, whichever one is best for you. Subdivision, and I'll show that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And that's where, uh, well, let me, let me make a model change and then I'll start getting into the subdivisions so you can see how that goes. So model changes. Uh, once again, you, you kind of move in on the model itself that's in elevation, that's in a front view, and you can use the select component command to, to select on it to see what it is. Now, okay, so here's your door swing, here's your door stop, and then here's the beginning of the frame, and then here's the top part of the frame. Uh, how many people show the door stop in elevation? One person, two, in a quarter inch interior elevation? Ooh, you're good. It's not a bad thing, I mean, it's good. Click on it, right click, and say select component. It shows me that it's the door stop. It's on color 150. There's the display representation of elevation. But I don't want that thing showing up here. Because when I take a look at my elevation here, okay, I, I don't want that line work to show up. Okay? But I also don't want to have to mess around with setting up a design rule that says, okay, anything on color 250, put to the erase component so it doesn't show up. My office standard is we don't show door stops. So I just don't want to see them. So my change is going to be, in this particular case, model-based. I'm going to change the model itself. So I'm going to turn around and say, this particular component, the stop, turn it off. You get this message that says you're modifying a component that's at the drawing default level. Okay, everybody's familiar with messing around with styles. You change something at the style level, it affects all the styles across the board. If you just want to change it for a, a particular style, you know, not the default, you can do that, or if you just want to change it at a particular object, you can change that also. Everybody understand that? Okay. So I'm just going to say okay. And now it's gone. Now if I come back here to my elevation, I click on it and refresh, it's now gone. Now if my office standard is I'm never going to show door stops, then instead of going around and, and making a design rule, like we just showed with the magenta, just make the change on the styles. Turn them off, and then not have to worry about it again. It's not a design rule that you have to go and create. And if you notice something, look at the door swing. Door swing stops at, at the door stop, but then when I refresh this again, now it goes up to the frame. So it's intelligent enough to understand, okay, yeah, I need that line work now to go up a little bit further. Make sense? Okay. Yes. In the style itself. Oh, I'm just showing this as an example, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, you, when you're creating your, your master door styles for your office, absolutely. And that goes back to sitting down with your principals and say, okay, what do you want to see? What do you don't want to see? This is what you have available to be, to be visible. We can turn this on or off. We can change this line weights. You make this thicker, make this thinner. How do you want to do this? And, you know, like I said, most firms that I know don't show the door stop, so you just turn it off on the style. Yes? <laughs> Slightly off topic, but if you go to Style Manager, okay, you say Open, and you should have a button up here that says Content. If you click on that, that'll get you right over to where the folder is that's the styles. And if you double click on that, obviously Imperial, there's everything. That's everything that comes out of the box. And you can see that, uh, where is it? Uh, 
Yeah, there's your, your, there's your door styles, okay? And there's your section styles. How many times a year? What? Okay, that's news to me. Anybody else hear that? Really? God help, God help you CAD managers. <laughs> If it's exactly the same name, and, the, and, and if you give it a different name, it shouldn't override it. But personally, what I end up doing is I always have a separate folder away from here just for that reason where I put everything. And everything that I create as a, a standard that's on my, my palettes for that are my office standards, I'll point to that other directory. Anything that I have here, what I, first thing I typically do is, is when I go to a new firm, and I'm creating my styles to be for the first time, is I'll make a copy of this and put it into that Office standard folder and then start doing all my edits and tweaks and everything there. Again, slightly off topic, but, but there's two schools of thought on that. And, and, I, and I understand his rationale for it, and, and there is legitimacy to it. Um, but again, it, you look at the pros and cons, and you have to make a, an individual office decision as to which is the best way to do it. Because that, that solution may be good if you're a one-man firm. Uh, it may work if you're a couple people. Uh, but if you start getting into where you're a large firm within a single address, or if you're a large firm across multiple offices, across continents, across time zones, then that starts to go away as an option. Okay, so we've created a, a, a design rule. We've messed with it at the style level, or at the model, maintain layer color line type properties. Okay. There again is the one where I said if you go back to edit the um, style, you have this box right here. Maintain layer, color, line type properties for the display set used during generation. Okay? Let me repeat again how this works. Anything that's within subdivision one. Okay? And what we have right now, if you click on the line, we only have one subdivision. Okay? We only have this one box that goes around the geometry that I'm creating the elevation from. So right now, I only have one subdivision. This command here of maintain layer line type only works for objects that are within subdivision one. Okay? Anything outside of subdivision one will still be governed by the um, components and the design rules. Now, in addition to that, if you do have a design rule, okay, so in this particular case, uh, let's see, like this stuff here for the guardrails, for railing styles, so there's anything within subdivision one. What will happen is because there's a design rule, it will ignore this and go with this setting. Okay, that makes sense? So if you do have specific uh, needs for line work, you can create a design rule and then let everything else be governed by the layer color line type properties of the elevation of the geometry. So now that I've set that, and I get that little cross there that tells me this needs to be updated, similar to like a schedule table. It now refreshes. Now notice how the door swing 
still stayed at dash dot, but that's not what it is in elevation. It's because in this style, I have my swing lines rule, and here's my swing lines that's saying red dash dot. And right there is my swing lines component. Anything visible that's on color 54, color 54, is going to the swing line component. And right now in the display properties, it's set to red and dash dot. So there's your example that it looked back at everything that was here. OK, so my hatching, my hatching match, my gray, my gray matches. OK, around here, that gray. Notice this, though. And, and this is, and, I, and I'm glad it did show up this way. OK, notice how it's gray on the two lines here, but it's gray and, and it's got this kind of pale color right there. Because what you have is you have the two lines that represent the frame, and then there's also another line there that represents the edge of the door panel. OK, you did not do anything wrong. <laughs> And I kept kicking myself when I kept looking at this going, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I, I, I got this right. This, this should work. Um, this is something I, I need to talk to the people at Autodesk about in, in that why is it giving me these two lines like this? I, I don't know. I don't mind how that works right there, but I would think that if, if this is truly going to match how it says it's going to, then it should match like what I see here. I don't know. I, I just I just think that's something that should be looked at. And and actually that's a, a, one of the things that I found actually fixes it. I would have to come back to this guy, make a copy or you know move to do that move to front, and then it fixes it. But that would be okay if I only have one door in my project. But I, I was working on hospitals, and you know, I have 300 doors in there. Uh, I'm not about to go back to 300 doors and, and change all that. Uh, that's one of the things I'm just going to work with or, or set up a, a, um, a design rule to make it work the way I, I want it to work. But notice how the door swing stays the way that it is, the way that I want it to be, even though that it's within subdivision one it's going by whatever the design rule is. So I can set up the design rule and then have everything else just go to whatever my settings are. Make sense? Yes? What are we doing? Okay. Subdivisions. Okay. Now here, what I've done is I've created you know, three sets of walls, like you were talking about having things step back. If I click on the bounding box, okay, and I come over here to the properties palette, I have the option of adding subdivisions right here. So I click on this guy, I get this box, and I'm going to add two subdivisions just some arbitrary numbers that come in. Okay. If I click on the little triangle grip and bring it down, click on the triangle grip and bring it down, so that now here's subdivision one, subdivision two, subdivision three. So anything from here up to here is going to look a particular way. Anything from here to here will look a particular way and so on and so forth. Even though in elevation, all of my items still look exactly the same. I haven't edited the model at all. Now if I come back here, let me see if I saved it. There you go. So now the color intensity will step back. Now a word about the I, I am basing this on the
the AIA standard .ctv that came out of the box. And if you take a close look at it, um, it what you, one of the things you end up finding out, and I purposely opened that up so just so I can show it, is that if you organize all the colors that come out of that CTV, you find out very quickly that there are only seven different line weights that come with a CTB, which kind of goes back to what we were originally talking about. What do we have? Three, five, seven, nine. Okay, that's four. They're giving you seven. So there really is no need, and, and that's one of the arguments I've always had with other users. Okay, what's out of the box? 0.25. No, 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 no. That's, that's not thin enough. I need 0.2. Okay, you're really going to tell me that you're going to be able to look at something and tell me the difference between 0.25 and 0.2? Let's get real. Okay, it's not going to happen. So let's stop splitting hairs here. Let's just use what comes out of the box and not monkey around with what is already available. And I'll leave it as it is. And by the way, no, I did not, I'm not that much of a geek and I'm not that inner-retentive where I opened up the CTB and typed this all in. That did not happen, okay? Uh, if, if you did not know that this was available, uh, let's, uh, right there, tableprint9.exe. Anybody know that one? Anybody see that? No? Um, if, if you can find it on the Autodesk website, if not, you know, come on up afterwards. If you have a thumb drive, I'll give you a copy of it. And what you do is you just take that and you put it in the root directory. Um, you know, program files, AutoCAD 2009, put it in the root, uh, root directory of it. And you double click on that. It'll give you the option of going and selecting the CTB that's within the program files. And it'll make an Excel file for you. So everything that you saw there was what I extracted directly out of the, um, the CTB without having to retype it all. And that also would be something good that you'd want to print out, lay down, you know, put that down when you're having your discussion with your principals and say, this is what comes out of the box, this is what we have available. You know, everybody has a pretty good idea what a .3 line is or a .5 line. Use that. Okay, so let's take a look at how all of that is put together. Okay, so I created three different component rules for the CMU pattern. And I filled in the description to say, okay, so this CMU pattern is going to go to subdivision one, subdivision two, subdivision three. And then my wall outlines are, you know, wall lines are for my outlines of the walls. This is the part where I mentioned earlier where you said, where I said that once you start realizing all the different design components that you can make and the design rules, that you start going, wow, that's going to be a lot of work. There's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to have to do. Okay, yes, and a little bit of no. Yes. You know, obviously you have, you know, doors, walls, windows, you know, curtain walls, stairs, on and on and on. But again, it's one of those things of if you do it the one time, then you're done. Okay. Now that will generally cover you for quarter inch elevations. Okay. So right now, anything within subdivision one will conform to whatever my office standards are for a quarter inch elevation. Okay. As it starts to step down, obviously, it's going to get less and less in, in intensity for the elevations. Okay. No, I'm not going to have to repeat the same amount of components and design rules because as it starts to step further and further back, the line work is all going to start getting about the same as it gets further back. So I'm only going to have to create maybe one or two design rules for something that is in the third subdivision. And I say all line work within subdivision three goes to gray because I'm not going to have a, any, any different delineation of the line work as it gets back into the third subdivision. It's pretty much all going to be the same line weight. 
So there's nothing that says that in the, in the first subdivision, I can be very specific in what I'm assigning my design rules to for the particular line weight that I need. So that when I get to my third subdivision, everything can be assigned to just one design rule and it's all the same line weight. Did that make sense? Yes? Okay. Because here's how in the design rules it starts to, like I said, you start to add, okay, anything with color 30 within subdivision 1, I want it to be yellow. Anything within subdivision 2, I want it to be red. And anything within subdivision 3, I want it to be color 250. So that's how I would assign that all so I can get my, my depth of feel effect for the elevations. Okay. Now, I know that, okay, interior elevations, okay, probably 90% of the time, 99% of the time, we're all going to be quarter inch, right? Exterior elevations are pretty much going to all be eighth inch, unless you have a really huge building um, that maybe it might end up being 16th inch. Okay. So now the thought process would be, if the wheels are turning, the thought process would be, okay, so I'm going to have this elevation style. This elevation style works for quarter inch drawings, which means that I'm going to have to make an elevation style for eighth inch drawings that I'm making. Okay. Well, yes and no. Try this. If you think about it, this next level, the second level down, is probably going to be half the line weight of what the foreground is, which is what's set up perfectly for quarter inch. So for argument's sake, I could say, and if your office agrees, that this line work here would work just fine for eighth inch drawings. Yes, no, maybe. So if what I did was I switched it to where nothing was in subdivision one and everything was within subdivision two and just refreshed it, I don't have to create an eighth inch variation of my elevation style. I just add another subdivision line and scooted everything down, take everything out of subdivision one and put it all in the subdivision two and I'm done. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and and it and it would be that as it starts to get further back, as it is in the other. Now, I don't think I've tried that. I don't think I've tried it. I've purposely always found a, a location where I always put in that subdivision. You know, where I put that line. To, to where I never ran into that situation. I've never tried that. It'll change it? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, then you would obviously have different line weights, yeah. But then what you could do is you could sit there and make a design rule that sits there and says, okay, anything within subdivision one, two, or three, or any visible lines, make it always go to something so that it, you know, one other uh, uh, display property so that it doesn't change. Did that make sense? Okay. So... Again, like I said, this is kind of going to be a, a living document in the sense that you're probably going to be able to get, after you have that meeting with the principals and everything, the majority of whatever your instances or circumstances you're going to run into set up within the style. But inevitably, you know, no two projects are the same. You're going to run into some oddball scenarios, and that's when tweaking it a little bit here for the project, being project specific in the tweak, um, will have to come into play. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's the, what the gentleman here was saying. It, he has a roof condition where it's across two different subdivisions. 
it will change the line weight. And that's what I'm saying is, is what you do is you, you figure out what that line is, what that color is, and you make a design rule that says any visible line, make it go to whatever line weight you want it to remain as, and then you don't have to worry about that scenario. Okay? That makes sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, if you go back here to, uh, is it data? Yeah, sort. If, if you take a look at the, um, the AIA standard CTB, I forget how to sort this. If you, if you look at colors one, two, three, four, five, it actually gradiates from, from being the thinnest line as red, moving all the way up. So that's already out of the box. So if, if, if your users are used to those first seven colors, like I was, you know, when I first started, everything was within those first seven colors. We didn't get into anything else. Um, that was the first thing I looked at, was how it goes from red to yellow. It goes from the thinnest to the thickest. So, yeah, if they're used to, to that type of, uh, if that's where their mind is, how everything is set up, then that's where you would assign those colors. Oh, are we on time? Got an extra half hour. Yes. You would generate your sections and your elevations as a view drawing. Okay. And I actually created a another one here. Okay, so different schools of thought. You 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 know, when you're creating your elevations, it's gonna be in a view drawing. If you're using space styles, you'll be able to automate creating the four together. Okay. And you're talking about using If you right-click on this guy and you go to the properties of it, right there. And then here actually is where you would set not only the style, okay, but also set up the scales or, so that you're not constantly changing it. That's one of the things I always bug the heck out of me is why does it keep going to 3 8 And then I finally realized that it was over here on the, on the tool palette. Change that to quarter inch and then do your elevations and you're done. Okay. So the style? Yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah. If 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 you sit there and you click on the elevation itself, you know, if I go to the properties of the elevation right here, I can just yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing that says that you can't change that at any time. Again, just like any other style, you can make the, that change at any time. Okay. Any other questions? Would you have to regenerate those elevations, Once you change... The, No. You can click it on the fly, and it'll make the changes for you. And in fact, also, uh, if I can remember where they put it, right there. If you're using the Project Navigator, which I strongly suggest if you're not using it, definitely use it. That's, that's make life a lot easier for you. Um, you could use this one command here. And what it'll do is it'll go through the entire project and refresh every elevation that's within the project. 
at every section. So one click, one shot, cut across the entire set, you're done. Don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay? Yes? So you're saying that when you cut through a section of this guy, it ended up creating something. Well, let's, let's take a look. So that's coming off of the space style. That's coming off of the space style. And again, cutting sections and doing elevations is basically the same thing. So if you want to know what these components are, go ahead and, and maybe do a live section of, say, the space style so that you can do that select component command and identify what that is and then set up your, your elevation styles to match up with those colors and it should get to work the way you want it to. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, I usually have to turn around and, and make a block out of it, blow the block, and take those lines out between those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the, only way you do that? the the question is about taking the lines out uh, when you have multi-level projects. And once again, mm -hmm. if I can get you over to it. See if it's within the style itself. Uh, you know what? I think it's it's within the material itself. If you if you click on the material, there's a, there's a selection within the material settings that'll say merge the line work together, and that should get rid of that line. But if that doesn't do it, then what happens is you, you click on the elevation. And you say edit line work, and, I, and I'm not, I didn't think I'd have time to cover edit line work, but you, what you would do is you would assign that to the erased component, and that way you don't have to explode it. You would just then say, okay, click, right click, edit two section. See how you have an erased component here that's on the Giano no plot? If, if I assign something to be on that Giano no plot on the erased, and let's say I'm going to do that for this guy here. Okay? It's going to go to the erased component. And refresh it. No longer visible. So that's all you would have to do. You can skip right past all that exploding and just assign it to the erased component and leave the elevation as it is. That way, if your model changes, you, the, mo the elevation will update and the uh, erased component will still be gone. That'll save you a ton of time. It'll save a ton of time. Yes? So you recommend that instead of editing the line work and erasing that? That's another option. Uh, again, like, like anything else within AutoCAD, there's about two or three different ways to do it. Uh, and I can't stand up here and say, this is the only way that you should do it. I'm, no, no, I don't think so. Yes. 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 No. What happens is when if you drag and drop that onto a sheet. Um, You'll be able to see the colors, and it'll maintain it because of VisRetain. VisRetain will maintain the, the colors uh, that you see here when you drag and drop it onto a sheet. 
yes, the plot is black. Because in the, CT, in the CTB, the CTB is set everything so that it's, it's set to black. Yeah. Any other questions? We got done a little early, but 10 minutes early. Yeah, and, and what I've typically done when I've created tool palettes is I, what you can do on this is you can just right click and say copy. And then you could copy this onto your office standard tool palette and then make your edits so that you don't have to monkey around with what comes out of the box. Because again, just like I said, you always want to put your, your firm's initials at the front of it. I always do that for my tool palettes so that my users would sit there and look at it and go, oh, well, that's the standard tool palette I'm supposed to use. And I would typically take these guys all out so that they don't come back. And that, and that only those office standard tool palettes would come up regardless of what project um, they have current. Um, side note on that, uh, everybody understand how to make sure that you only get the, uh, the tool palettes for um, you know, t your office standard tool palettes to come up regardless of which project is current if you're using the navigator? Huh? Make no, current, no project current. Close all projects. And then add all the tool palettes that are your standard office tool palettes. And regardless of which project you make current, your office tool palettes will always be the ones that are up there. It's as simple as that. I don't know if that's documented anywhere. So you say your stairs are going up this way, and you want to cut it and then look straight down? Yeah, I want to follow the steps. So you have the entire lift. Uh-huh. But looking down the entire time, you plan the entire lift going up. Uh-huh. Is there a way to do that? Uh, I don't So, so you you got your elevation. Come on, You want to cut the section like this, and you want to be able to. So you're going to see each level as it steps down from wherever that section cut is down. I would think you would just cut the section of, of the, the stair itself, or come up afterwards and we'll play with it. We'll see if we can get it to work. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Hall C, thank you. Uh, Hall C for the evaluations, please. Sure.